many of you uh, watched FRC's Pray Vote Stand broadcast earlier this week, and you, you'll recall that one of the items that was talked about was a prayer gathering that literally took place in the House chamber. Amazing. The House chamber at a prayer meeting in the early morning before, in fact, the session that eventually led to the election of Kevin McCarthy as a new Speaker of the House. Uh, and in fact, if you didn't watch uh, that pro uh, Pray Vote Stand, you can do so by simply going to PrayVoteStand.org and you'll be able to, to personally see what I'm talking about. Well, it's not surprising that uh, that gathering has received virtually zero media attention at least with the exception of the Washington Stand, which has a report on it that you can also uh, see at WashingtonStand.com, and I encourage you to go there. But with me now to talk more about this is Joshua Arnold. He's a staff writer at the Washington Stand. He's the one who actually produced the report. So Joshua, thank you for the incredible work you're doing, and thank you right now for joining me on Washington Watch. Hi, Judy, happy to be here. Well, listen, for those who are just now hearing about all of this for the very first time, uh, can you take us back to last Friday, what was going on, and how this whole prayer meeting got started? Just walk us through the events of that, uh, that day last Friday. Absolutely. It's hard to keep track because things were moving so quickly. But at the end of Thursday, there had been 11 votes for speaker and there had been no progress toward actually choosing one. There were still about 20 Republican holdouts. And so on Friday morning, early before they began the session, uh, members of the Congressional Prayer Caucus, most people don't even know there is one, but members of the Congressional Prayer Caucus gathered on the House floor down in the well there at the very bottom um, to pray over the day and over the events that would unfold. I was able to um, touch base with several of their offices and um, Congressman Mike Johnson prayed for unity. Congressman Tim Wahlberg prayed for God's guidance over the affairs of the day. Congressman Greg Stubbe prayed a prayer of confession and um, just confessed that the House was under God's authority and, and asked him to um, forgive all of the sin that had been committed by the members there. So these were the things um, that set up that day where there were four more votes for, for speaker. And at the end of the day, finally, we had a speaker chosen, Kevin McCarthy, who was elected on the 15th ballot. You know, I have uh, I was actually a part of the Congressional Prayer Caucus uh, while I was there, a member of Congress, and I was still on their thread last week. And when it first went out that they were going to call for prayer on the House floor, uh, in fact, it came out saying our founders, when they were facing crises moments, in the early days of our country, they cried out to God first and foremost, and they said, we're going to do the same thing. We're at a crisis. We need divine intervention. And it appears to me, Joshua, really divine intervention took place. Would you agree with that? Well, God is in control over everything. So a speaker was elected. God chooses our leaders. I'm certain that that prayer um, had some role to play there. Because now we can say, look, people prayed, and then God answered the prayer, and we have a speaker. Um, there's never a situation when something happens and we can say, mm, God didn't really cause that to happen. So I think that what we should do now actually is uh, thank God and offer prayers of praise and say, look, we prayed, and then you answered the prayer. And so let's offer thanks to him for that. Absolutely. Now, you, you had the opportunity to actually speak with some of those members in person. Is that correct? I got comment from their offices. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and uh, were, were there any comments that, uh, that were particularly striking to you? I mean, just the general um, sentiment from all of them were just, I believe in the power of prayer is what each and every one of those members said. I think there were well, seven that were, that were on the floor there praying. Okay. Well, there's no question that this speaks on multiple fronts, uh, and, I, and I hope it speaks a word of encouragement to our viewers and listeners that, uh, number one, there are people in Congress who believe in prayer, and they exercise prayer even on the floor of the House of Representatives. Uh, that in itself is something I believe that uh, people need to take encouragement from uh, and realize that it's not just people across the country who are praying for our country, but there are 
a number of, of representatives who are doing this as well. Uh, but this speaks, as you talked about, Joshua, to the whole issue of prayer and the power of prayer. And I, th I think you're spot on right now that this calls for a time to say thanks to God for what he did. Uh, how would you encourage people right now who are watching perhaps for the very first time and hearing this story? Uh, what do they need to take away from this? I think the best takeaway is uh, Paul's words in 1 Timothy, where he says, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intersections, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. And so Paul's calling us there, both in the good times and in the bad times, um, before God answers prayer and after God answers prayer, we should pre be praying for our governmental leaders. And we should be uh, praying particularly for those who are Christians, because it's really hard up here to be a Christian, and be praying that they would stand firm in the faith and that they would be faithful to God. Great advice. Great advice. And before I let you go, uh, there I mean, perhaps I missed it. Uh, if I did, I did. Uh, but how much media coverage has there been on this prayer gathering? I personally have not seen anything about it. Yeah, I think C-SPAN had the cameras rolling and a couple people snapped some photos, but there has not been another story on it that I've seen. Wow. Well, what, what basically in the story, the report that you came uh, out with, did, uh, did you say? And uh, again, tell people how they can uh, get hold of that report. You can find the report at WashingtonStand.com. Um, that's where I wrote the piece. And essentially it just details what went down on that day and um, the power of prayer. Um, you know, we've seen some instances of that happening in many different places in recent days and all sorts of ways across the country. The um, football player who collapsed on the field, people were praying for him and then he recovered. God really does answer prayer. He really does. And I, that's an excellent point too. I know. Uh, I've been in many conversations in different groups of individuals who were talking about that very thing as the entire nation prays for a football player. The, in many ways, the entire nation was praying for our country as well and the encouragement to see that many of our members of Congress were likewise praying, great source of encouragement. Listen, thank you so much, Josh, for joining us on Washington Watch and for all the incredible work that you do. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Judy.